Hey friends, Mac here. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to pack for a pack rafting trip. Over the last year, we've fallen head over heels for pack rafting and have been getting a lot of questions about it. So today, I'm super excited. We're finally getting into the details. The reason that we love pack rafting so much is that it allows us to explore places that we already know and love deeper, while also giving us that same opportunity for new places that we come across on our travels. Such as when we find ourselves near a lake, well, now we have the ability to explore it. In places with glaciers, we can get in the water and see the ice up close and personal. We can hike upstream and then paddle back to the car. We can backpack and explore waterways deep in the wilderness. Truly, the possibilities are endless because a pack raft can go anywhere that we can go. In this video, I'll be primarily focusing on how to pack for a pack rafting trip that requires you to backpack in, even if that's not the type of trip that you're going to be potentially planning. For instance, if you're shuttling rather than hiking, I promise this video is still going to be helpful and it will be obvious where your packing list will differ from this one. The irony of this video is that we are currently filming it in the middle of the desert. We are nowhere near water, but hey, we're making do with what we have. Before we get into all things pack rafting, I wanted to thank our friends over at REI for supporting this video. They have been a huge resource as we've ventured into this new hobby of pack rafting. On multiple occasions, we've stopped in at REI locations and been able to talk to in-store experts who actually have far more experience than we do and help guide us in the direction of the right gear for our pack rafting trips. In a pinch, we have been able to order and send gear ahead of us to various REI locations when we've forgotten things. All we have to do is stop in, pick it up, and get it on our way. Frankly, I don't know where we'd be without them. Today, I will not be getting into the details of the camp supplies that we pack in combination with our pack rafting gear, Reason being is we have an entire video on it. I've linked that video down in the description below so you can give it a watch after this. All of the things that we'll be talking about today will be in addition to everything in that packing list with one exception, and that is clothing. But we'll get to that a little bit later. This is a good time to warn you about pack weight. So much for ultralight. When we're just backpacking, our base weight is usually somewhere around 25 pounds. But when we start packing on all of our pack rafting gear, it's really easy to end up with a pack that's over 40 pounds. So just be warned, we're not packing a light pack today. Let's get started with the raft itself because it's what makes all of this possible. Owen and I both have the Alpaca Wolverine raft with whitewater decking. This boat and its whitewater accessories are a little overkill for a lot of our tame float trips. However, we purchased these boats with a few very specific trips in mind that we're wanting to do in the future. Recently, we did a one week long pack rafting trip that navigated a lot of whitewater. It was a great chance to put the whitewater skirts to use. The boat and all of their accessories performed incredibly well, and it was impressive to see how capable these boats are in whitewater conditions. There are a few different pack raft manufacturers out there, but a lot of them offer the ability to open up your raft and store your gear on the inside. Before inflating, you can open your raft via a zipper, slip your gear in, secure it into place, close the zipper up, and inflate your boat around it. This allows you to get your gear off the bow of your boat, giving you better visibility and making it more maneuverable in technical water. We will usually make the decision about if we're gonna store our gear on or inside our boat, depending on the water conditions ahead. In total, each of our boats, including whitewater decking, weighs 8.9 pounds and packs down to be this big. The total weight capacity of our boat is 350 pounds, and that is for both paddler and cargo. As for what boat is best for you, well, that's something only you can answer. I highly recommend reaching out to the fine folks at REI because they can use their experience and expertise to guide you based on your desired trips, your size, and your experience level. Owen and I both have the Aquabound four-piece shred paddle in fiberglass, as it was what was recommended to us based on our boats as well as our skill level. In total, the paddle weighs 38.5 ounces. We went with fiberglass for our first paddle, even though they're not the lightest. This is because they're forgiving and we're still learning to navigate in a pack raft. 
we didn't want to have to worry about breaking a paddle if we needed to push off the rocks or the bottom. Carbon fiber, on the other hand, is much lighter, but is also more fragile. As for which paddle is best for you, again, my advice is the same. I recommend speaking with a gear professional because they can steer you in the right direction based on your specific boat as well as your skill level. And I'm pretty sure there's a pun in there somewhere. No matter what you go with, I do recommend a four-piece paddle because if you're gonna be backpacking with a pack raft, it's important that you can navigate dense foliage. Owen's paddle actually recently got stuck together making it a two-piece paddle and the poor thing was just getting caught on everything. Dry bags are crucial in pack rafting. If you plan to store your gear inside of your raft, you'll wanna be sure that you get two of the same dry bag one for each side of the boat to be sure that you keep the weight evenly distributed on the water. Inside of your boat, you should have or may need to add tie down rings to secure your gear while it's inside of your boat and you're out on the water. Anything that you want to keep dry, including clothes, food, sleeping bag, tent, what have you, all needs to fit inside of these dry bags as well as inside of your boat. I highly recommend doing a test pack into your dry bags and then getting everything inside of your boat just to be sure it fits before you get out on a trip. In some occasions, you may need to pack sharp objects into your boat, such as trekking poles. And when you do that, you just wanna make sure that you keep the sharp end covered with something soft, then keep it inside of one of your dry bags or your pack before putting it in your raft. This is obviously to avoid punctures. I also recommend carrying an extra dry bag that can be used as a backup if something was to happen to one of your first ones, as well as something that can be strapped to the bow of your boat for keeping the things that you'll need for the day when all of your gear is stashed inside of your inflated raft. Bow bags are made to fit specifically on the nose of your boat and are watertight. We recently picked ours up before a long trip and it made all the difference in the world to have easy access to the things that we kept out for the day. They are convenient and easy to remove and perfectly fit on the bow of our boat. An extra dry bag can work in place of a bow bag, as I mentioned. However, they're not quite as convenient because of the roll top design on most dry bags. These bow bags are also great for casual floats because you can store things like your keys, your phone, your wallet, things like that inside of it. So if you plan on doing any type of pack rafting at all, I highly recommend and in investing in a bow bag. I highly recommend carrying a few extra straps with you anytime that you're out on a pack rafting trip. They can be used to hold your pack to the bow of your raft, tying your shoes to your boat, or for tying your boat to a tree or a rock when you go to shore. Truly, the possibilities are endless for what you can do with straps when you're out pack rafting, so we recommend carrying a few because you never know what you're going to need them for. Don't go on any pack rafting trips without a personal flotation device. I know it's a no-brainer, but you never know what kind of conditions you could meet out on the water. So come prepared and bring a PFD. Owen and I have the NRS Ninja PFD. We like it because it's pretty compact as far as PFDs are concerned. I also like that it has a little pocket in the front where I can store a small tube of sunscreen or chapstick. I also love that it has a convenient place for a safety knife. Carrying a safety knife is important in the event that you flip and need to get free of your raft or any form of entanglement. In pack rafting, conditions are incredibly unpredictable and a safety knife will ensure no matter what, you have the ability to get free of your raft. On a lighter note, NRS included features like a blunt edge on the back of the blade for, I quote, spreading cream cheese at lunchtime and an integrated bottle opener to help you spread good cheer at the end of the day. By keeping a safety knife on your PFD, you have it close at hand no matter what you could end up needing it for. A throw bag is a piece of rescue equipment used to toss to somebody after they've capsized and are floating down river. This is a piece of equipment that you always carry, hoping that you never have to use it. But it can also be handy for retrieving gear also after capsizing, as well as for climbing during a portage. Owen and I personally do not have one yet, as the majority of our trips thus far have been on slow moving water or we've happened to be with somebody who had one. We plan to pick up the NRS Compact Rescue Throw in the near future to be sure we have one of our own. Helmets are a really important piece of equipment when you start getting into some serious white water. We personally do not have whitewater helmets yet just because we haven't leveled up to that kind of paddling yet. But when we do, you better believe we'll be getting helmets. This is crucial. 
do not go on any water-based trip without the tools to repair your boat. Because at the end of the day, if your boat cannot hold air, you are out of a boat. So in the event of a puncture, bring a repair kit. They're lightweight, they take up almost no space, and they will save you. If your boat has a zipper allowing you to open it and store gear on the inside, do not go on a trip without your zipper lube. You need to clean, dry, and lubricate the zipper after every trip, as well as periodically when you're on a trip if your zipper is getting a workout. I keep a little piece of fabric as the means of applying the lube, and a little goes a very long way with this stuff. By keeping your zipper clean and lubricated, you're ensuring that your zipper will work smoothly on all of your trips and remain sealed. As I mentioned earlier, clothing is one of the major differences between packing for a backpacking trip and one that incorporates pack rafting. What clothes you need will greatly vary depending on where it is that you'll be pack rafting. If you're in a cold climate or a place with cold water, you may want to look into a dry suit. Thus far, Owen and I have only planned trips in mild conditions and thus we haven't needed one. So today I'm going to be taking you through our packing list for mild climates. I pack two different sets of clothes. I pack my rafting clothes and my camp clothes. For my rafting clothes, I try to stay as covered as possible because the sun is really strong out on the water. And I also try to only pack things that are quick drying that I don't mind getting wet. I pack a long sleeve with a hood, running shorts for warm days, pants for cold days, a rain shell for heavy rapids or when it's cold and raining, performance wool bra and underwear, a hat, duh, and sunglasses. I also recommend a strap so you don't lose them into the drink. For my camp clothes, this is a set that I try to keep dry at all times because it feels really nice to be able to change into dry clothes once you get off the river at the end of the day. For this, I pack a fresh shirt, a fresh set of underwear to change out of wet ones, a pair of pants because the bugs are often terrible, and a warm jacket. I also recommend a quick drying towel like this one just in case you need to dry off. My favorite shoes for being on the water are forever and always Bedrock Sandals with the Pro Tread. They're designed to hold traction even in wet conditions. Recently, I learned a very hard lesson in only packing a teeny tiny bit of lotion on a long pack rafting trip. Getting in and out of cold river water day in and day out quickly zaps moisture out of your legs. And it felt like I had the worst sunburn of my life. So be generous when you pack lotion, you and your friends will be thankful you did. While on the subject of lotion, be sure to bring lots of sunscreen and lots of bug spray. The sun is strong and the bugs are often abundant. If you want to learn more about the art of pack rafting, I strongly urge you to pick up a copy of the Pack Rafting Handbook. It's a great tool to help you learn as you get started in the sport. It covers everything from how to maneuver through river features, mitigate risk, trip planning, boat control, and how to react when things go wrong. This might be the most unhelpful part of this video, and that is how you pack all of this gear into your pack. But that's because there's so many different types of packs out there and they come in so many different shapes and sizes. But here's what I can tell you. On the inside of my pack, I try to keep all of the things that go inside of my boat, such as the seat, the backrest, dry bags, and the inflation bag. I also keep the whitewater skirt inside of my pack if it's going to be joining on the trip, as well as the patch kit and zipper lube. On the outside of my pack, I essentially keep everything else. I like to strap the boat to the top of my pack and tuck the paddles inside the outside pockets. Then I hook the PFD kinda wherever it'll fit. Sorry I'm no help here, but my best piece of advice is to practice packing so you can figure out what strategy works best for you. That just about covers how to pack for a pack rafting trip. I hope that this video gets you excited to get out there on the water and hopefully see something new in the process. In the description of this video down below, I have linked a blog post that has the full gear list to help you find anything that I mentioned in this video. Also, if you're interested in checking out one of our recent pack rafting trips, I've linked the video to that as well. Thank you so much to our friends over at REI for supporting this video and so much of our work. They make it possible for us to spend all of this time outside using this gear so we can come back and we can share those experiences with all of you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you down the river. Are you ready then? Raft itself, well, this big. It's down to be well, like this big, I guess. At all, but wow, wow, wow.
So many flies. Sorry, there's like. I also wec recommend. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my God. I've written this terribly. <laughs> 